What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. We got quick guides coming for every map in Call of the Wild, starting with Rancho Del Arroyo and working our way all the way down to Hirschfeld. These guys will come with a color-coded hotspot map that will cover every species on every given map in the Hunter Call of the Wild. They will also come with an integrity chart that will show you what you can and can't use for each species on said map. I hope you guys enjoy these videos and find them helpful. If you do, please do drop a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Lots of awesome content coming on the way for you guys. Feel free to join the Discord where you can download the hotspot maps and the integrity chart. The link is down below in the description, but without further ado, baby, let's jump into it. Alright, we're gonna jump straight into it. We got part four of the quick guide series today, Quattro Kalinas. We're gonna go over a little bit of everything, hotspots, loadouts, we're gonna talk about strategies. I'm gonna go over specific little details about hotspots for specific species. And uh, basically everything that we've done in the previous three episodes of the quick guide series. All of these quick guide videos include a hotspot map that covers every species and is color coded and can be found in my discord free for download. As well as an integrity chart showing what ammunition you can use for every species and still get your integrity. Those charts are going to be available in the discord. So definitely be sure to check those out. But the first thing I want to talk about, let's talk about uh, loadout. Let's go check out my loadout here and see what I'm carrying for Quattro Kalinas. So I've got the M1. I've got the Ranger 243, I've got the Virant 22, I've got my Apex, Inoculars, I'm carrying the Rhino 454 right now with me today in this loadout, and then as far as collars, I got the Jackrabbit collar, the Road Deer collar, the Wild Boar collar, the Red Deer collar, and then I've got my first aid kit. So the M1 is going to cover a lot of the species on this map. It's going to cover all four of the Ibex, it's going to cover the Iberian Mouflon, the Iberian Wolves, the Wild Boar, and the Red Deer. So most of the species on this map, you can use something like an M1 or the Eckers 30-06 or the 303 uh, or the 6.5. Any of those guns, the 7mm is going to be good on this map as well. Those are all great options. I like the M1. That's why I'm carrying it. It's my weapon of choice for that slot. The 243 is simply going to be for the Road Deer. Uh, you can use the Mosin if you want. It's a class 3 animal. You can use the Mosin. You can use the 243. I wouldn't recommend using the 223 uh, but yeah my weapon of choice in this uh, scenario is the 243 so that's what I'm carrying the 22 is simply for the European hair the 22 handgun would be another good option a bunch of different shotgun options bow options for the European hair they are class one the Rhino 454 is just kind of an extra you can carry um, this map the biggest animal that you have in this map is the red deer so you kind of you don't have to bring the 300 or the, or the 338 so it's another one of those maps where you kind of get an extra slot for something fun you can bring a bow bring a shotgun bring a handgun right now I got the 450 you can bring the air rifle out with you. And so as far as collars, I've got the Jackrabbit collar. That's going to be for the Iberian Wolves only. The Road Deer collars for the Road Deer. The Wild Boar collar for the Wild Boar. And then the Red Deer collar I've got for Red Deer. There are no collars for any of the Ibex species or the Iberian Mouflon. All right, so on that topic, I'm going to quickly throw up the integrity chart that I've made for this map. All of these videos have this integrity chart, and they are available in the Discord free for download, like I said. Uh, check them out. It's going to be super handy. You can have that up while you're hunting, as well as the hotspot map, which I'm going to have up in just a sec as soon as we bring up the map start talking about hotspots. All right, so let's talk a bit about hunting locations, drink zones, hotspots, things like that for all the species. I'm going to toss up the hotspot map right now. Also, I should mention I've got a grand a full Grand Slam video for this map that covers all four of the Ibex species. If you're trying to put together an all-diamond or an all-rare Grand Slam multi-mount with the Ibex, I do have a full video dedicated where, like, I'm going to go over a little bit about the Ibex in here, but I do have a full video that's dedicated completely to that. So check that out. I'm going to leave the link down in the description for that video. It's going to help you a ton with hunting the Ibex species. So yeah, let's really quickly go over some things about hotspots and drink locations. Just some specific things that I want to point out. Top right lake here, red deer, absolutely huge for red deer all around the lake. Roe deer, another big one. Mouflon are going to be drinking here. Uh, Iberian wolves. So for the roe deer and for the Iberian wolves, we're talking right side, mostly. You're going to have some roe deer here. You're going to have some roe deer there, mostly females. But if you come a lot, that's kind of why I have my tent here. If I want to quickly just get to this side, I like to come along the south side from the south post or from my tent and come along this way. And you're going to start to see road deer kind of right at this bottom corner. And then all along the kind of side of this mountain here and up to about halfway down the lake, you're going to have a whole bunch of male road deer. A huge hotspot. Huge hotspot for male road deer. So definitely check that out. Same thing for wolves. Basically the same kind of setup too for the wolves here. And then red deer are kind of all spread out. You're going to have a zone here. You're going to have a zone there. You're going to have more red deer there. Red deer here. Uh, and then more along the edge. They're all around. So this lake is a huge hotspot huge hotspot in general for Quattro Kalinas. There used to also be Ronda Ibex here, but they don't go there anymore. They used to come along the, the south edge 
of this lake. They they no longer do that. I haven't seen any Ronda Ibex at this lake in a long time. As far as Ronda Ibex go, you're talking in this lake, this lake, this lake, uh, and this lake as well. And this lake is super cool because you're gonna have both the sea Ibex and Ronda Ibex here. You get a little bit of a fusion happening here. This is just a really good lake in general for a bunch of species. Uh, we all know if you guys have played on Quadro, this is a huge, huge hot spot here. Um, I would highly recommend get a tent up on this mountain. Let's actually travel over there so you guys can see what I'm talking about. But yeah, huge hot spot for Basit Ibex, uh, Iberian Mouflon. Actually, the, the Iberian Wolves actually uh, hang out here too when they drink. So that's worth checking out. But if you get a tent up here up on the mountain and just head over to the cliff, get up here with an M1. I would I would suggest the M1 because of that fast firing rate. But if you get up here with uh, the 6.5 is great for this too. 6.5 is particularly good for long range, so that's a good option. But uh, get up here, and I don't know what time it is. It's 15.08, so there isn't going to be anything really down here. But uh, all along the far side of this lake, you're going to have Mouflon, Basit Ibex, like crazy. Just tons of them. I've gotten so many Diamond Basit down here. And uh, I don't know if you guys saw the video, but I did actually one day. I got four Diamond Basits here spread out around this lake. It was absolutely insane. So yeah, really good for Mouflon. Just got my albino Mouflon over there uh, a couple days ago. Definitely don't want to do that. You're going to want a tent. If you've got one tent to place on this map and one tent only, this is where it's going. Trust me. Definitely try it out. Uh, road deer are really spread out, but a couple of my favorite spots for road deer are this lake, just from this outpost, um, really all along here. The map kind of comes to an end right here, but uh, all in this area. Really, really good for road deer. Uh, obviously this spot, we already talked about that. Grados Ibex, boom. Oh my gosh, I've gotten so many diamond I uh, Grados Ibex there. It's absolutely insane. I've given away a few diamond Grados Ibex at this lake. You're gonna wanna hunt that. And also in particular where my hunting pressure is there, right here and kind of along, right at kind of this end of this lake, you're gonna have tons of Grados, tons of Mouflon as well. And then just check the rest of the lake too. They can be kind of all around, but these are your two big hotspots for Grados, absolutely. So Southeastern Spanish. These two lakes are huge. Uh, this is probably my favorite lake. They used to go to this lake, Southeastern Spanish Ibex. The last few times I've been there, I've not seen any. So I don't know if they still go there. I'm not sure what's going on with that. Another huge hot spot for road deer that I should point out is actually the north side of this big lake uh, right here. You're gonna have tons of road deer all around here at the top, right at the north side of the lake. So definitely check that too for hunting for a diamond road deer. Uh, the river, there's road deer all along the north side of the river. You're gonna have some rabbits down here, uh, some red deer. Check out the hotspot map. I think that's pretty much all I want to talk about as far as specifics go for hotspots. And actually, I think that's probably going to wrap up this video. We did it quick, man. We did it quick, baby. These guides don't have to be 25 minutes long. I could have made them that long if I wanted to and really kind of stretched it out and, uh, you know, thrown a ton more ads in here. But I, I don't want to do that. The, the reason I want to put these out is because these are the guide videos. These are the quick guide videos that I always wanted to see before I made a YouTube channel. So I'm putting them out. We're doing a full series. This is part four. Uh, the three I've already done are Rancho del Arroyo, Tia Arroyo, and Silver Ridge Peaks. We're working our way down from the newest map to the oldest map all the way down to Hirschfeld. I'm going to leave the link down in the description for the playlist that contains all the other three. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, leave a like on the video, please. And thanks. I really appreciate it. It helps so much if you guys do hit that like button. Uh, share the video with your friends. Share the series. Hopefully this is going to help a lot of people in Call of the Wild and in finding diamonds and rare stuff like that. I appreciate you guys. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Lots of awesome content on the way. Follow me on Twitch. I'm streaming three times a week right now on Twitch, four times a week on YouTube streams every day daily uploads as well. The 24 hour stream to celebrate 10,000 subs is this Saturday starting at 10 a.m. Pacific time. We're going for 24 hours over on Twitch. I hope to see you guys for that. Take care you guys. Be safe and I'll see you guys in the next one.